So the UCAT is an ever-changing and constantly evolving exam and the way things are going with grade inflation is becoming even more important, especially this year as the BMAT's been dropped now and many universities have all announced that they are going to use solely the UCAT as their selection criteria. So except for if you're going for a grad and you've got the GAMSAT to fall back on, basically the UCAT is your one shot to get a decent enough score to meet the threshold and therefore get in. So in this video what we're going to talk about is is the, some of the things that have changed and then some of the timeless things that are going to help you if you're sitting it this year to score highly and get into that high decile, maybe the top 5%, basically 3,000 and above, that's going to help you secure your place at medical school and then hopefully even beyond that, go into your first choice medical school. So like I say, because it is so fast changing, if you really want to keep up with what's going on, I'd recommend that you go to the FutureDoc website and sign up to the newsletter because we'll be putting out weekly updates, but also some free talks as well as some of the stuff that's going on on the paid FutureDoc program to help you stay up to date with everything. There's also a fantastic free resources page on there that we're just about to upload a brand new UCAT guide to give you kind of a succinct way of making sure that you score highly. But let's first start with some of the things that haven't changed. Now the way that I would approach the UCAT is still exactly the same. If you remember I talked in this video here about a three-step process that is going to make sure you go through it in the right way to not guarantee, nothing is guaranteed, but give you a very good chance of getting a 3000 plus. So it usually goes with those three phases. At first Firstly, familiarization. I would really, really recommend that you use a reliable online resource that is going to teach you the fundamentals that you need to do well. And actually, my online course has just been updated and is absolutely fantastic still. I mean, I'm biased, but every day in UCAT season, I get somebody who emails me to say thank you for all of the help that it's given them and how it's helped them score really highly. So if you want to check that out, I've just actually put a discount on for the first 100 people who click on the link below that they can get, uh, like I said, a discount to the course and they can get it cheaper than they otherwise normally would. But whether you use our resource or another one, the familiarization is really important. That lays the foundations for knowing all the techniques, all the usual stuff that are going to help you go accurately and speedily. Those are the two goals, speed and accuracy, that you need to maintain whilst you're preparing for your UCAT. But at this stage, it's just about learning them on time, not worrying about speed at this stage, but having the right techniques so that when you need to speed them up, you can turn up the pace and use those same things much faster because they're ingrained and they are the most efficient ways to be able to speed up later on. The second phase is putting it into practice. So then you are doing untimed questions. At this stage, you're just trying to apply the stuff that you learned in phase one, apply those fundamentals, learn how to do them, not being worried about the speed of them at that stage. And then phase three is then when we start timing ourselves. Now, this is what I would call the intense phase. And when people ask how long they should spend preparing for the UCAT, I would say that phases one and two, almost kind of you can do them however long you want. It, there's no point in starting too early, but equally some people are very keen to get started and want to lay those foundations early on. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You hear of people having UCAT burnout and that's more towards the phase three when you're starting to go you know, hard because the UCAT is an assault on the senses. It's you know hard questions, taxing on the brain, but also there's that time pressure. So it can be quite a lot. And this is where people burn out when they do too much of that over an intense period of time. So the final phase will really depend on you. And it's also how you calibrate along the way. By calibrating, I mean it's important to do regular mock exams to get an understanding or a bearing of where you are. You also will have an idea of what kind of score you need to achieve. Now, like I say, for all the students that we coach on the FutureDoc program, we are always aiming for a 3000 plus, And that is one of the reasons we had a 93% success rate last year is because we're really just going for it and aiming to optimize every single aspect of the med school application. Another side point is to remember that although the UK is really really important it is just one of probably six factors that make up a really strong application so don't fall into the trap of thinking that it's all about the UCAT yes it's important but also there are other elements that we really need to make sure that we don't ignore and if you don't do particularly well in the UCAT these things can kind of bolster the application and make up for those lost points on the UCAT score so like I say in phase three we kind of almost have to understand where we are understand where we want to be and just 
figure out how we're going to close that gap. So the way I would recommend is to first know the pace that you're at and you're getting a certain score and then know the pace that you need to be at and also maintain a score like that. So what we want to do is just gradually reduce the time, i.e. increase the speed at which we're doing those questions so that we're slowly but surely getting used to the pace of the actual, what it's going to be on the exam day. I don't know if you're familiar at all with the phenomenon of flow. It's when you are like in the zone and you're absolutely, you know, time kind of just dissipates and you're just so focused that you are just in that flow state and just everything seems to be happening automatically and well that's the kind of thing we want to channel when we're doing the UCAT. Now to trigger flow state people say that you need about a 4% improvement so we want to stretch ourselves not too fast so that it's overwhelming and we just can't do it but not so little that it's not stimulating enough and we are kind of not as focused or we're kind of distracted thinking about other things. So they say about 4% is the optimal stretch to make it to put you in flow state but also to make it interesting and engaging. So in that phase three we want to figure out how we're going to maintain that flow state and kind of slowly incrementally increase that speed in a way that's sustainable and manageable and you can just see the trajectory. Now one of the big pieces of advice that I would recommend is to not worry if you hit plateaus. The UCAT progression doesn't go linearly, it will go in steps and sometimes once you hit a new step you'll be frustrated that you're not going to go to the next stage but it's very normal so you just need to be aware that although you feel like you're plateauing maybe even decreasing slightly it just means that you're loading the bases to have your next jump and a lot of the time people sometimes over practice with this sort of stuff so what they'll do remember this is kind of like a mental sprint if you're knackered if you've done too much work and you've not rested and you're doing too much in a day it's because you're tired yourself out and you're not able to think as clearly as, as you would normally and that way people say you know I've been doing five hours in a day and I'm getting worse. That's why you need to make sure that you pace it the same way that you would do for sprint training is the analogy I always use because at the end of the day, the focus is on maintaining energy and speed. So it's about practicing, but also resting enough so that you can come back stronger the next day. So what I would say I have noticed has changed over the years and I predict is probably going to be even bigger this year by the very nature of the UCAT for undergrads particularly being the only option to get into medical school is that we're gonna have even more grade inflation. So that means that the average score is gonna go up and to be competitive you need an even better score than that or than you did in previous years. What I see more and more now is that everybody is getting help in some way and it's really important to get the right sorts of advice to make sure that your technique is correct, that we're just having the right instincts when we see a question that is that knee-jerk reaction. I see this question, I'm going to employ this technique and uh, you know the one that you've drilled and you know and it's just as soon as you see it, it's an instant reaction to go for it because that is the speed that we need to have to, like I say, accuracy and speed are the two things. So we want to just respond quickly and know that the tool that we deploy is going to be the one that's going to get us there fastest and give us the correct answer. So I've been doing this for a long time now and I can see that the difference between those who do well and those who don't is simply the quality of information that they're getting and the quality of help that they're getting. So if you want to come to somewhere where you can guarantee that the teaching is incredible, that the tutors are literally the best in the country for teaching this sort of stuff. I would highly recommend that you consider checking out the Future Doc program at least. It's application only and we are tight for spaces but if you have you know a good attitude and you really want to work hard it might be worth applying we might be able to squeeze you in and we'd really love to have dedicated students who really want to go into medicine and dentistry for the right reasons. So if you want to find out a little bit more about how you can apply and see whether you can get in you can check out this video here. Otherwise if you want to get that discount on our course you can check out the link below and like I say the first hundred people who do that will have that discount but otherwise I wish you the best of luck if you have any questions about the UCAT of course comment below we always are very responsive to any questions and any comments that people write so best of luck with your UCAT and best of luck with your application and I'll see you hopefully in the next video